We are now live with my friend, Dr. Margaret Christensen. Let me just tell you a little bit about her if you haven't met her. So she's an Institute for Functional Medicine faculty member for 12 years now. She first became interested in functional medicine 15 years ago and trying to solve the riddle of her and her family's complex health challenges. Unbeknownst to her at the time were consequences of severe toxic mold exposure. She became intimately familiar with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, autoimmune, hormonal, neurological, and psycho psychiatric consequences of unrecognized biotoxin illness. A board-certified OBGYN for 23 years, her initial boutique functional medicine practice has grown into the Carpathia Collaborative, a large multidisciplinary functional medicine practice based in Dallas, covering the full spectrum of complex chronic disease. The PATH practice provides 360 degree functional lifestyle and nutritional medicine, including on site teaching kitchen, yoga studio, education library, and serves as a site for community learning events. Dr. Christensen is passionate about educating her clients and co colleagues about root cause whole system medicine. So, welcome, Dr. Christensen. Mm, thank you. So, thanks so much for having me, Bridget. Yeah, I just want to tell you a little story. I told a client today, I had a client, um, new client who ran her uh, urine mold test. It was positive. She has a tremendous amount of neurological symptoms that went undiagnosed for years. And she was talking about someone in her life, I think maybe her boyfriend, who was like, gonna, she said, oh, I'm going to see Bridget today. But she's like, oh, you need to see a real doctor. And I'm like, yeah, there's a few real doctors who know about this stuff. You can talk to Margaret Christensen. It's sometimes it's like people are trying to look for you know the arguments against. Yeah. Oh well, she's not a real doctor. Okay. Well, you can we can find some real doctors for you. <laughs> you can be an OBGYN and still get toxic mold. Like yeah. it's, so, it's just funny to. It's not that funny, but you know people just still have these prejudices against this topic. And it's too bad because it's like she shouldn't be running around trying to prove this to him. Um, but yeah, well, there are well, you know, it's doctors who do this too. <laughs> um, I just um, uh, one of one of the people that I interview on the summit is Dave Asprey. So for those of you guys don't, who don't know, Dave Asprey is the gentleman who started the Bulletproof Executive and, and Bulletproof uh, dot com, and he has the Bulletproof Coffee, and he he's he, like you, he's an educator. Um, and um, we have a whole discussion on men, men and mold, and why it's, uh, you know, again, a little harder to convince them. But w women are usually a lot more on board, w women, because women and kids get sicker, and oftentimes with the initial exposures. Yeah, a little more vulnerable. I guess I was lucky in that sense that, um, you know, my husband at the time, who was a very logical engineer, I just was like, this makes sense to me and I'm not feeling well either. And like, he actually pushed me ahead with, mm -hmm. you know, I was the one, I was so sick. I like, couldn't imagine like having to pack up and do all these projects, but he really like spearheaded that. So I was lucky in that sense. I have plenty of other messy things to deal with, but at least I didn't have that one thing. And I know it's, it's really tough on, on folks. So great. We're getting some questions already, which is awesome, but Let's, um, yeah, let's do an overview because I we sure. may find some people who are, you know, still new to the topic. So why is toxic mold a thing <laughs> we need to know about? How does it happen? What, what does it do to us? Sure. Well, you know, again, this is it's a super, super common problem. We have, you know, over 50% of homes that have had water damage and 60% of commercial buildings. And because of how we build our homes today and with using sheetrock rather than plaster, which that changed in the early 60s. And because of the tight, um, <clears throat> how tight the, uh, the homes are built. So there's no air that's breathing, all that. Uh, it's super, super common. So you get wet walls and they grow toxic mold. Now, so what I'm talking about is toxic mold exposure, not molds that are outside that just cause allergies. Um, <clears throat> although, you know, breathing in, you know, molds from indoor poor air quality can cause allergies, uh, it really ends up triggering and inflaming the immune system. So I do functional medicine and I got into functional medicine because I got super sick and I had to close my ob gym practice and my whole family was sick and there were, everybody was children and, and, you know, it took eight years to figure out why was, why was everybody sick in different ways. And, uh, unfortunately, again, <clears throat> my children are now grown and, uh, and adults, but one of them is still very severely affected from a psychiatric end. Oh. So I learned all about the 
you know, the, the neurodegenerative diseases, the autoimmune diseases, the uh, psychiatric issues, the gut issues that can happen, all the mystery diseases that are that go with this from um, chronic fatigue syndrome to POTS syndrome uh, to, uh, again, fibromyalgia, all these, and that's part of what was going on with me. So it is a huge, it is, it's a huge problem. Um, I have a tertiary functional medicine practice in Dallas. Uh, so I end up seeing a lot of people actually have been, have been to a lot of other practitioners, not just conventional practitioners, but also even functional medicine ones. Um, <clears throat> because it's, uh, again, this is one of the underlying causes of so many different pathologies in the body because mycotoxins are so toxic. And it just depends on your particular genetics and, um, and again, your exposures and how full your t uh, toxic bucket is anyway. So uh, those, those, those are some of the things that, that, that we see. And uh, it's just amazing when you recognize, oh, that's what it is. And then you start cleaning it up and cleaning up your environment and improving the air quality. And then also your diet is a huge piece of that. And then I know, uh, Bridget, that you're very into essential oils. Um, essential oils is is can be a, again part of the great solutions that we have for helping on the healing side and helping create healthier environments. Yeah, yeah, it's so tricky because the symptoms can be such a long list and so overlapping with other conditions. You know, mm. like mm. Just so. So I think it's just incredibly important to make people more aware that this is a real thing and talk about it. You know, because even like. I was, you know, I, from what I hear, conversations about cancer were very hush hush in like the fifties, like, Ooh, like, what is that? And let's not talk about that. And, and now it's like, totally okay to like talk about cancer. And it's a real mm -hmm. thing. And like, we do fundraisers and I don't know if mold will ever get to that point, but it's just as dangerous in a lot of ways. It's one of the underlying causes of cancer. I mean, exactly. it, it, yeah, it gets, you know, and, uh, you know, and I didn't even kind of get a lot into children, but the, the whole spectrum with children, uh, again, from ADD to autism, uh, chronic asthma, allergies, respiratory infections, ear infections. If you have, so if you have a bunch of people in the house and everybody's sick with a different thing, because that's what happened with, you know, in, in my situation, I had, I had, you know, one kid with asthma, allergies, we had ADD issues going on. We had bronchitis, uh, we, you know, adults were having psychiatric stuff, sleep disturbances, fibromyalgia, migraines kind of the whole gamut and, um, uh, but cancer is, is one of the things with long-term exposures because of the, the actual, there's multiple ways that it, that it impacts cancer, including really suppressing the immune system, the, the part of the immune system that actually goes after cancer cells mm. uh, gets suppressed. So that's uh, one of the one way. That, yeah. Lots of ways. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. so true. Yeah. There's yeah. so many ways. So I, yeah, I just, I'm happy that you're doing this work to just make people aware of it. It's always like so such a relief to me when I mention toxic mold when I'm like out somewhere and they're like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. I'm like, oh God, thanks. So nice. You know, it's like, yeah. so you don't have to just be this total outlier. And, mm -hmm. and then there are just so many people suffering without any correct diagnosis. So that's just, it's just, so, the first step is they need to be aware that this is a right. new thing. Yeah, and That's you know, any right. kind of chronic recurrent infections, chronic recurrent sinus infections, bladder infections, prostate infections, bronchial infections. That's, I'm also looking for, uh, again, mold exposure. And somebody had uh, um, asked a question about Lyme and uh, co-infections. Anytime I see Lyme, and also this is all my colleagues at ISEAI.org, International Society for Environmental Acquired Illness. Bridget, I believe you're a member. Um, uh, but anytime we see Lyme or co-infections, we ask, where is the mold? Because so many people end up getting treated uh, over and over for years and years with antibiotic therapies and stuff for Lyme. And it turns out that, that it's really, it's mold, toxic mold exposure that has brought down the immune system, the innate immune system, allowing the um, Lyme um, and or other bacterial or chronic viruses or Epstein-Barr or whatever it is uh, to, to be activated <clears throat> because your innate immune system, that's the part of the immune system that, that is supposed to be going after these bugs and after the viruses and after cancer cells, toxic mold suppresses that and then it overactivates the uh, adaptive immune system. And that's the part of the immune system that makes antibodies for autoimmune diseases and also cytokines. You know, everybody now knows what cytokines are. There's these inflammatory chemicals. That's what COVID is, is creating a lot of cytokine yeah. storms. Mold does that. So if you have toxic mold exposure, and that's one of the things they're not talking about in this whole damn COVID thing, air quality. 
if you I know I wrote an article city, on it yes yeah, yeah. with poor air quality you're living in a home with poor air quality schools dorms churches office buildings poor air quality and you're breathing in you know whether it's VOCs and uh, chemical toxicants or pesticides that they're spraying the building with and or mold which is the number one cause of poor air quality in these buildings Wow. You are more susceptible because your innate immune system is suppressed. You're not looking up for out for viruses and you're already making cytokines and you bring that COVID virus in there and boom. Yeah. 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 I did that. I only post the article we did in the, uh, in the chat and I almost just feel like it didn't, just like you're noticing Margaret, like this is really happening and oh, yeah. like there's not in the news at all. It's yeah. driving me insane. So then I'm not getting any traction on it either. Well, and there's and not, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and again, what, what we're not talking about in the news is all the things that we can do to help protect our immune systems, to boost our immune system. But it's very interesting. Everybody has been censored. Okay, yeah, there, there, yeah. There, there is one that, yeah. There's one narrative that's happening right now. Yeah. There's no, nothing we can do. Masks, wash, you know, wash your hands, vaccines for everybody. And I'm sorry, right. that, that is, uh, that is, She's a real not what I agree. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. really, Ooh, it's really yeah. tough. And I'll just say my, I want to actually talk a bit more about your story, yeah. but I'll say when I COVID started, you know, I started to feel nervous too, because of my own mold exposure, because it's still some things are off right. in my yeah. body. I have asthma. Uh, yeah. Like I get sick more often. Like I was like, uh Oh, but I just doubled down on the things that I already knew. I worked on inflammation. I did a lot of writing about, um, all the supplements and like different studies on them. So a lot of it's the same stuff mm -hmm. that's already working for you guys. But and yeah. then Margaret can give some tips later too. But um, you, you are a vulnerable population and you need to just, you know, do the things you already know to do and you can expand on that later. But uh, yeah, Absolutely. nobody's talking much about, certainly not right. talking about toxic all and COVID. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge. Well, I mean, if you think about it, all the cities with the highest death rates, whether you're looking at New York, New Orleans, Houston, you know, Seattle, these are all highly humid cities. Um, they've all had water damage from big storms um, and they're, um, you know, they're, they're wet and they're moldy. Uh, so. Yeah. And some information in Italy too is about air quality as well. And oh, air quality like, too. And Wuhan, Wuhan, some of the had you know, terrible, terrible. China has horrible air quality. Yeah. It's just like, they're just skipping those stories. Like, Oh, no one wants to, know about that so it's, it's yeah it's really frustrating it's, it's yeah it's yeah well yeah it's it's, it's, it's yeah that, that's a whole political discussion we can yeah we're talking about it today yeah yeah yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah 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 and i just want to briefly and then we'll look at your summit and what's what sure. you're offering as you're covering covid and all sorts of great topics um that your your story and i've heard some old stories is yeah. one of the worst i've yeah. heard i think because yeah. so many of you were affected and it just affected your family in like such like catastrophic ways i do you want to yeah. Elaborate on it. Sure. Okay. Sure. Like, yeah. You know, you know, I got, you know, I, like I said, I was exposed, um, you know, I had made it, uh, as an, uh, OBGYN, my practice was quite successful. And so we moved into a, you know, onto one of the fancy streets in Dallas, um, in a, you know, beautiful old home. And what I didn't know is, is, you know, we didn't know until we moved out that underneath the house, there was all this black mold that, that was growing, that was being sucked into the air conditioning system. Cause uh, we had, uh, the ducts were running underneath the house. It was pure and beam and there had been a leak and anyway, um, but yeah, everybody had gotten sick and I, I was getting so fatigued and my brain was so slow. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a type A, you know, personality. I was always at the front of my class, that kind of thing. And um, I just couldn't figure out that my whole body was hurting. I had terrible fibromyalgia and I, it got so bad. I just, I, I, I couldn't keep going and I, I had to sell my practice and Wow. Uh, and again, nobody connected any dots. Uh, it took eight years to connect the dots. Um, but by, um, you know, my, yeah, one of my sons at the time was nine years old and he was having asthma allergies again, ADD symptoms. Um, and, uh, he, but that's when he first had it having, um, hallucinations and he oh, was di diagnosed with psychosis, not otherwise specified. That was his diagnosis wow. and put on antipsychotics and, um, you know, and then that led into lots of depression and, and all this later. And now he's 28 and he's severely, uh, he's severe mental illness and schizophrenia and yeah. bipolar and, you know, hallucinations and hospitalized multiple times. And he's also got Bartonella, which is again, one of the Lyme co-infections. 
Again, none of this is recognized in the psychiatric circles. So um, I have a number of talks on the summit. I have Dr. Mary Ackerley speaking about psychiatric illness and we have Dr. David Hasse. He's another big functional medicine um, educator talking brain inflammation. Dr. Suzanne Gazda talking about PANS, PANDAS, um, neuroinflammation and brain imaging using things like neuroquant MRI imaging so that we can see all this and what to do about it. Um, Dr. Tom O'Brien, if people follow functional medicine, they've heard about Dr. Dr. O'Brien talking about the breach brain barrier. Um, Big deal. Uh, yeah, sinus infection. Again, recurrent chronic allergies and sinus infections too create so much brain inflammation. So that's, I mean, I, I mean, I, we experienced all of that and my former husband has Parkinson's. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, so again, all these neurodegenerative diseases, MS, Parkinson's, ALS, Alzheimer's, uh, from long-term exposures. And then you, yeah, there's a whole cardiovascular component. There is, um, yeah. Somebody was asking some of one of the questions about mitochondria. That's what happens. So we, if people understand that um, a lot of these environmental toxins, if you're talking about heavy metals as well, um, but, you're, uh, but mycotoxins are fat soluble. These little teeny tiny particles that are fat soluble and they get inside cell membranes. Our cell membranes are two layers uh, the outside layer is water soluble and the inside is lipids or, you know, like oils, like fats. And so those mycotoxins and environmental toxins get inside cell membranes and inside the mitochondrial membranes. Mitochondria is what produces energy in the body. So every cell has hundreds to thousands of mitochondria. And when you get these fat soluble toxins inside those membranes, it disrupts the membrane function. So you are having a hard time getting nutrients and oxygen into cells, hard time getting toxins out, hard time getting, making energy from the mitochondria and they start breaking down. And so that's why you can see this entire diversity across the spectrum of all chronic illnesses and gut illnesses as well. If somebody right. was asking about autoimmune, we can get into autoimmune in a minute. Um, and it just depends on your genetics. You know, when your mitochondria have been disrupted and your cell membranes have been disrupted, how are you gonna manifest? Right. Your own, well, I just, yeah, just like anything else in life, like why is one person struggle with their weight or their skin or their this right. or their that? Like it's right, just yeah. sort of where, you know, where you came mm -hmm. from and what you've been exposed to. So, yeah. So yeah. Thanks adverse for child, yeah. Adverse childhood events, you know, did you grow yeah. up with a lot of stressors or, you know, abuse? What about traumas that you've been you know, witnessed? How many antibiotics you've been on a lifetime? How many other chemical exposures? Um, you know, again, major stressors. So all of these things we cover in different sections because that's how, you know, somebody's asking, well, how do I, you know, how do I get removed mold from the body? I would, I would start by, please go to the toxic mold summit. It's toxic mold project. Yeah. That, I think you've got a link. You, yeah. You can, let's, let me show it again. So the link, let yeah. me bring the link back. Cause I, Oh, I just, let, 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 let me, yeah, let, let's make sure it's your, yeah, that it's your link. Um, yeah. I think I put it in the Facebook and I forgot to put it in the group. Okay. So I'll go grab okay. it. Yeah. I mean, how many speakers do you have? How many talks? 40. Yeah. 40. So yeah. And so we're covering we're, we're, all the topics. Yeah. 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 We've got you know, children, men, gut, SIBO, SIFO, um, autoimmune, you know, autoimmune hormones, um, psychiatric, neurodegenerative. And then um, again, again, all the different approaches that we have. But one of the things that you can download from that is um, there's an ebook that's called Moldy Now What? And it kind of goes through the protocol and the steps that we take to how do you get rid of it in the body? How do you test for it? Somebody was asking about what's the best testing. There's different tests that you can do for looking for mold exposure. One of the tests that most of us are using who are doing using environmental medicine is a urine mycotoxin test. There's three little different labs out there that are doing it. One really has the best test right now. It's real time lab. They have come down on their price. Um, GPL mycotox is also out there, but unfortunately recently uh, they've had some challenges with their, uh, their results and how they're, and um, they've changed some of the parameters. So it's not been as consistent as in the past. So right now I'm using real time. There's also different markers that you can get in the blood uh, that are looking for these cytokines. And so if anybody is familiar with this, there's Dr. Shoemaker's protocol. And so there are some cytokines that we measure, TGF beta and MMP9. These are inflammatory chemicals that we can look for. You can do antibody testing in the blood. That's something else. A very, very simple test that everybody can do who's listening that watch that you can go to survivingmold.com and you can take the online VCS test or visual contrast sensitivity, VCS. 
that's a very rough screening test, but it helps yeah. to look, look for, um, it, it can at least help to look to see if you have some evidence of some biotoxins impacting your nervous system and your eyes are the very um, important part of your nervous system. So. Yeah, I'm gonna just share a few th things because you know, mainly we want to uh, direct people to your event because it's free and it's now and it won't be around you yeah. know free a month from now so right. um we want to let me open that first um and uh yeah we that's the number one resource and then i can share our blog and you know we offer all this testing i know i know how it is when you're in mold it's just like there's so much so many questions and everyone's at a different stage right of where they're at so um we can share some of that but i think you just kind of start with it's so important to educate yourself. There's steps that I missed um, in my mold journey uh, where I just made mistakes and how I remediated or, you know, just lots of things. So getting educated is great. You don't have to watch all 40 things. You no, know, no, no, no. You can just take and choose. But like, can. you know, here's my buddy, Mark Hyman. Um, you know, he and I have been teaching together at IFM for many years and Mark almost died four years ago. Um, and I heard, was, yeah, I've yeah. roughly heard about it. I, had, I haven't heard the whole story. So I yeah, know, yeah. So he, ta well, he, ta he, he talks a little bit about his story and we talk about also the use of uh, IV ozone. And, and his book called The Food Fix is probably one of the most important books that, that people need to be reading right now. Really? Um, Great. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and please get a copy of that for all of your legislators and, you know, um, and also the teachers. I mean, they they need to understand. Oh, I did hear about him. I was at a at a conference, and he was he was in with like a Congress person. Yeah. It was so great. The yeah. campaign to get real food in the schools and stuff. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have to revisit that. Oh, yeah, we need fantastic. we need real food in schools and hospitals, and also clean air <laughs> in yeah. schools. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting as schools are like kind of while well, our schools were, you know, vacant, are still vacant, like, yeah. makes me a little nervous about the yeah. air quality. I recommend Neil Nathan's book probably a few times a week. I yes. think he's brilliant in this space. Um, yeah. And, and he talks about the highly sensitive patient and people with mast cell issues and histamine issues. You know, if you're, if you're sensitive to everything, light, sound, smells, foods, <laughs> that's a great talk. Um, you, you passed Terry Walls. Uh, Terry Walls. Yeah. She's such a great speaker. I really enjoy um, Yeah, talking about mitochondria and she, you know, she suffered from MS and, and mold is part of her story. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, as well as heavy okay. metals. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I she, think this sounds good. The cell yeah. membranes one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's um, Kelly McCann. Uh, sh she's also one of the founders of, uh, at ICI and also with the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. Oh, okay. Um, we, we talk about the, the um, what used to be called a PK protocol. We call it lipid membrane therapy now, but using phosphatidylcholine, butyrate. That's one of the big, that, that's that. one of the, that's one of the, and especially if you got neurological issues um, in heavy metals, it, that's great for detoxing, lots of different things. Um, so PK protocol. This one, Gail, oh. Clay, Gail Clayton, she's one of the, the, the free interviews too, if you um, sign up now um, that you can watch ahead of time. Um, Gail and I um, talk all about the immune system and how mold impacts the immune system and, and how do you actually get all this autoimmunity and then what do you do in mast cells and histamine. And we've also created a, the Mold Detox Diet, which is a online program to teach people again how to eat and change and the, the basics of what to do if they don't have a practitioner to work with. Um, and, and then uh, we also have an advanced immune module for practitioners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Suzanne Gazda has an amazing, we have an amazing discussion. Um, and we're using cool. a lot of slides looking at brain imaging and she's a neurologist and uh, talking about uh, mm. pans and pandas. That's, you know, uh, inflammatory infectious problems with the brain that can create all kinds of also psychiatric symptoms. Uh, but we talk about the role of mold in that. Dr. Leila Doolittle then talks also about those neuroquant imaging and then what can you see an abnormality? How do we fix it? What do we do? So interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to tune yeah. into those. Yeah. I love the learn yeah. studying the brain. And yeah. so those are, were those in last time or are those new? Yeah, uh, those are new. Uh, cool. those are, those, yeah, so I have 22 new interviews. Um, Mary oh. Beth Ackerley, we talked about psychiatric. Evan mm -hmm. Brand, um, Candida, the, the, the whole Candida connection. Yeah, definitely there. <laughs> and there you are, Bridget. And Bridget's I see. talking about, yeah, again. Don't again. listen to my talk. Well, yeah. we were really fun well, one, actually. We did a lot of detailed stuff about yeah chemicals and essential oils and stuff? Well, I think that's a, I mean, such a huge piece of, again, if you're multiple chemical sensitive, if you're 
find that you're getting headaches or nausea from you know different smells you can't walk down the aisle of the grocery store where all the detergents are um, that uh, I, I start to highly suspect mold uh, as an underlying cause I have this constant discussion every time I get in an Uber or a Lyft, you know, they, they're, they're, they have those damn plug-ins yeah. or the trees, get rid of all those. We have a great uh, discussion about that. Good for uh, you. Yeah. I'm usually just like, okay. Yeah. Jeffrey Smith, um, he's, a, for those of you guys who don't know who Jeffrey oh, great. Smith is, yeah. he is amazing understanding genetically modified foods. And also we talked about genetically engineered viruses on that, on that talk. Oh, so gosh. That's, that's enough. I want to hear that one. Yeah. So yeah. And kind of what's going on in that world. And, um, uh, Matt Pratt Hyatt is, we again, talk about the different urine mycotoxin testings. He used to work for GPL. Now he works for a real time. So, um, yeah, I, he's, he's the one I actually interviewed a couple of months ago and yeah, then no, yeah. one, no one bought tests, but I think it's just a weird time in life right now. And you'll, yeah. you'll buy your tests when it, you're ready. Yeah. Um, I love Kara's work too. Yeah, Kara like, work. Yeah. Detailed. So fantastic. Since yeah. we're talking about methylation gen and genetics in that, and Dr. David Hossey talks about really kind of very cutting edge therapies. I like um, that. And, and, yeah. and, and, and toxic mold and complex brain injuries. Uh, I think, you know, important thing if you've had a traumatic brain injury of any sort, head, neck, or spine, falling out of a tree off of a horse, you've had a car wreck, you know, bike, you know, bike, whatever, baseball to the face or head, it's soccer player, you were a dancer you're a cheerleader, um, head injuries and neck injuries make you much more susceptible to having uh, worse consequences. So there's, there's yeah. one way to approach that, yeah. Yeah, we always screen for that with clients. And, you know, we have a pretty basic screening with my mm -hmm. screen for mold chemicals and head injuries because yeah. those are really important. Yeah. So I guess some of the autoimmunity, yeah. Amy yeah. Myers is a big yeah. favorite. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, Amy and, and Gail Clayton, if you're interested in autoimmune, Maya Shetri talks all about children. I love that. Uh, yeah. really Marcel helpful. Pick, yeah. she's one of my colleagues at IFM. Uh, we nice. talk hormones and women's hormones okay. and altered events and adrenals. Siobhan Sarna, she's a, she's a big SIBO. Right, yeah. She's a SIBO gal. So we have, uh, yeah, SIBO, C yeah. We talk about SIBO and CIFO. Uh, if you guys don't know who Doug Kaufman is, everybody needs to know Doug Kaufman, knowthecause.com. He's amazing. And He's been in the field of fungus for 40 years. We have a great discussion too about addiction uh, and then also women's hormones in, if you get huh. the bonus. Yeah. Stephanie McCarter, we talk about uh, electromagnetic fields and EMFs um, and uh, Ty and Charlene Bollinger. A lot of people know them about from uh, cancer, uh, the truth about truth cancer. About cancer yeah. yeah. And then again, yeah. the whole cancer mold connection. Yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, Dave Asprey, again, he's just an amazing um He's made an amazing advocate out there, uh, and, and really he helps to speak to the men about, hey, wake up, guys. Your erectile dysfunction, your weenie's not working. Yeah, <laughs> you're irritable. Yeah, yeah. So mm. I like going over this, and I hope people don't mind because yes. it's just, I think it gets, it kind of like reminds you and shows yeah. us like, this, this was a good talk. This was yeah. exciting, and I get to see what I'm excited about. So obviously, like, oh, you, you know what? I didn't see Donald Dennis on there. I think I saw that name. Okay. Okay. He has, he has amazing, an amazing, amazing. Oh yeah. Here Donald Dennis. Um, oh my God. The, the stuff on sinuses is so important, especially if you had recurrent sinus infections or you have chronic sinus headaches. That is um, really important because everybody's That's a tough one as a practitioner too. I'm oh like, my gosh. Oh. Well, everybody's treating with antibiotics, but we have whole fungal antifungal protocols that just work like a charm. Oh, I'm going to, and, um, yeah, sure. and yeah, that one's really good. And he's got a bonus, uh, too. So I've got a lot of, uh, great bonus materials too. I mean, I had, I had 12 talks that I had to move. So I just moved them into the bonuses from last, oh, from yeah, from last time I did it. Funny. And so there's a lot of really, um, you know, uh, and for, for a very small uh, price, you can own the thing because it's a lot of material. And right. uh, you're yeah, not going to get yeah, through yeah, it all, especially yeah. if your brain isn't working because you're, you're Oh, totally. Just, yeah. You know, and, and like I said, you're all in a different stage. So just be in the stage you're at. So own it so that you can later go back and be like, okay, now mm. I'm ready to do whatever. And then you go listen to that talk or find that resource. So yeah, I, I always tell people like when I was going through it, I felt like I, I had to work. I had a family, like I didn't drop everything to like, right study mold but as I found a new piece that intrigued me you know I would just like follow it very organically like oh now I'm gonna like go this direction now I'm gonna go and then it, it works you know and mm -hmm. it's never a fast recovery there's right. le learning all day long isn't gonna make you recover well, necessarily it, 
You know what? Did you see Annie Hopper? Hope, hopefully, she I did. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. That's good. Well, then you, we don't have to. You're be, like, I hope I didn't forget it. Yeah, no, well, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I've looked at that so many times, I can't see. But, but I mean, you kind of talk about the fact this is a long process, and many people have been sick for a long period of time before they figure out actually what it was. Like for me, it was eight years, and just being chronically ill, and it's particularly if you have a history of having had ACEs or adverse childhood events and or other traumas in your life. There's a whole PTSD component that comes with this that affects a part of our brain that's called the limbic system. And the limbic system that gets involved, that, that is also why you get the neuropsychiatric symptoms and syndromes and also hormone disruption. It has to do with our limbic system becomes inflamed with this. So uh, doing limbic system retraining is, can be a critical, critical piece for helping in recovery. And that's just using your own mind and brain every single day to help rewire itself. And there's all kinds of exercises. So Annie Hopper's program. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Dynamic, yeah. yeah, dynamic neural retraining system. Um, yeah, and so looking I back, I'm sure you go through this too, Margaret. Like now looking back, like as yeah. the years pass, I'm like, huh, maybe that thing, that weird thing I did for so long was because of yeah. like my cell danger response. Like I was so so anxious, you know? Oh yeah. So anxiety long. is huge. Anxiety is one of the very common symptoms. And then there's all the hormonal disruption symptoms like night sweats. Um, you can certainly get, if you're, you know, premenopausal, I mean, heavy periods, bad endometriosis, growth of uterine fibroids. Body. Yeah. Yeah. Infertility is a biggie. Low libido for uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're just tanked out usually on your home. Yeah. I mean, well, so many really fatigue is such a huge piece of this and chronic yeah. fatigue symptoms and then yeah you know so the guys get you know they get their testosterone goes low and anyway yeah so okay, let's take some questions we have sure, some yeah. good questions yeah. um i mean pretty much if you're asking it i'll i'm just kind of joking i'll answer your question but pretty much if you're saying is is this symptom called my, caused by mold the answer is yes yeah. uh so barbara said does low blood pressure and extreme lightheadedness play into uh, mold toxicity yeah um uh, yeah, again, so again, because you're impacting the adrenal system, uh, again, you can see, you can see a lot of what's, what's called adrenal fatigue out there. And part of that can be very low blood pressure. Uh, and there's a lot of different things that are happening too. A lot of folks get dehydrated, their, their intravascular volume. So inside their blood vessels, they actually lose volume. And so they're dehydrated and said they're getting a lot of edema or fluid in their tissues and or they're peeing very frequently. So that's one of the things that contribute to uh, low, low blood pressure, lightheadedness, a lot of vertigo too. So again, if you, if, if you are inflamed in your brain, you can get everything from headaches to vertigo to again, feels like you're, you know, you've got the brain fog, your brain's on molasses, you can have learning disorders, uh, you can have psychiatric symptoms from ADD to um, anxiety, depression, bipolar, psychoses, et cetera. Somebody asked a question, you know, I assume you have your son out of a moldy environment and, and detox his body, how's his mental health now? Well, unfortunately, um, he's, a, he's an adult now, he's 28. By the time I figured out what was going on, uh, that was eight years after that, so he was already 17, 18. Uh, the, mold, the divorce rate in moldy houses is super high because everybody's sick and cranky. So his dad and I had gotten divorced. I mean, his dad was having all kinds of symptoms. I didn't know that that's what it was. Um, and then you, then you have somebody who's an adult and you can't tell them what to do. And uh, unfortunately, then he had subsequently he had a head injury and some other things and then ended up uh, living in additional moldy environments, oh, which yeah. is super common mm -hmm. in, in this kind of situation. And, um, and then me trying to educate or tell any of the psychiatrists that were taking care of him in the hospitals that were taking care of him, hey, he's got mold and Bartonella. They were looking at me like I had three heads, you know, it's like, you know, so unfortunately he has not recovered. Um, I can't control what he does, what he eats, uh, and, you know, and his dad wasn't on board when all, you know, I figured all this out. This is another common problem. So uh, one of the reasons I am as passionate about this as I am has to do with ha helping to educate others so they don't have to go through what I've been through. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm so sorry for, for everyone involved. I, you know, as, as I was hearing the story about your son, I think also when you're at that age where your brain is still developing to yeah. be exposed 
that it's probably why you know potentially rewiring things in a, in a way you don't want them to go so right totally some things are you know and if people are always ask me well are you fully recovered I'm like ah, pretty good but <laughs> it's like it's like if someone's been in a car accident or like what you know it's like are you ever going to be quite the same when your body's been through like a major trauma so I think that that's a question that always needs to be answered with like some subtlety because the, but our bodies are constantly changing. We're always going through health challenges. Like you said, you could have new ones added on. You're going to have aging. There's just so many factors. And then, yeah, your body's been through a, a physical trauma that it just sees as trauma, emotional trauma of going through mold, probably financial stress. Like, and there's some things that are damaged that are never going to quite come back. You can lose brain cells. Like there's just things that are going to change, but I still keep trying to be my very best. And I keep playing around with new ways to do that. Or if I've been slacking on my diet, cleaning back up. So it's like, you can never go back in time. Right. right so right. you can never say, Oh yeah, now I'm back. Like when I was 25, it's impossible. So you just have to like be the best you can. And perhaps your son will get to a point where he can't wait. it could just be the, the state he's in. He'll never have. Yeah. Like, it's, it's right. Well, and you know, again, so, um, uh, I, and I talk about this in several of the interviews and one with Dave, Dr. David Hossey, if you have had a history of traumatic brain injury or a TBI, head, neck, or spine, and you don't have to have, it doesn't have to necessarily be a concussion, but, and you, and you combine that with chronic stresses, ACEs, PTSD, that causes neuroinflammation, and you, and then you're adding biotoxin exposures, whether it's Lyme, heavy metals, pesticides, um, mycotoxins, especially if you have all those three of those things overlapping, you've got some neuroinflammation that's going on, uh, which you're going to have to take care of the rest of your life. I take care of myself the rest of my life here. And, you know, I've got all these ongoing st chronic stressors and I had a pretty big hit again about two years ago, but I, I want to give everybody a lot of hope because, because at least once you recognize, Oh, this is what it is. There's some, there's four basic simple things that I talk about to do. Okay. Let's hear clean it. food. Yeah. Clean food. So you, you get on, you know, on basically a, a um, plant-based paleo diet. You may need to do a, an autoimmune paleo diet. You may need to do a SIBO protocol. You need to be to do a FODMAP protocol, depending. But basically it's clean food. I mean, you get rid of the sugar, you get rid of the grains. And I'll, I'll come back to the question about food and, uh, food and mycotoxins. Um, so clean food, clean air. So you definitely want to be sure that you have high quality air filtration. And I talk about, I, I have Dr. I have to excuse me, Mike McNatt. I have two air quality guys talking, Mike Schrantz and Mike McNatt. But Mike McNatt, we talk about different types of air filtration, air, air ionization, et cetera. So you can, you can do some clean air in your house, um, at least sleep with that at night, and then turn off the damn Wi-Fi and no electronics by your head, no um, cell phones, you know, sleeping with that. There's a lot of other things we can do. But you got to get, you know, trying to uh, decrease your EMF load. So that's in the, okay. and that's under the clean air. And like all the stuff that you talk about, um, uh, Bridget, in terms of, you know, non-toxic cleaners and, and using only essential oils and uh, all of that, we want to totally clean up our air environment as best we can. Uh, so clean food, clean air, uh, clean water. Again, getting some, just even a basic um, Brita filter for, in the fridge and there's, there's a much better quality and all that. But if you, if you have the, if you can, you can do whole house water filtration, you can do reverse osmosis or et cetera, but even it just as simple, just put it in the fridge and please stop drinking out of, uh, plastic bottles, uh, get filtered water and, and put it in one of those glass bottles that has those, those, um, uh, you know, like those rubber things on the outside that helps to, to insulate the bottles. So, <laughs> so, they, don't break. Break. <laughs> so they don't break. Yeah. And, um, you know, so clean air, clean food, clean water, and a clear mind. So this is where, again, using the programs like DNRS, Annie Hopper's program, having daily prayer, meditation, gratitude, focusing on what's, you know, focusing on your, on the positives in your life and gains and um, stop watching all the negative stuff. Stop watching negative social media, negative television. The news is all, there's such BS that run and, and such lack of truth telling um, and it's, it's there to create a lot of fear. So, um, you know, and then, you know, again, if you've had ACEs or traumas, uh, you really want to maybe do some EMDR along with the DNRS. Um, and so those are things that I've, um, help. 
Great. Yeah. And I put my little basic, I was okay. our basic mode right. protocol, okay. but certainly I'm a gazillion yeah. other things you yeah, can okay. do. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. kind of our base, okay. our starter. Yeah. That's, um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I had, I don't know if you can see the Q and A, Margaret. So I'll yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, I can. Can you see the Q and A bubbles or just the chat? Um, I see the chat with the questions and yeah. then I see what you just put up. Um, I don't see any little bubbles. Okay. There. There's a different, some okay. people are writing it. So I'm going to read a couple over there okay. about testing. Uh, so okay. Amir asked to um, give more insight on what's going on with Great Plains, which by the way is a company I use. So yeah, yeah. like, we'll, we'll, you know, don't throw somebody mm -hmm. under the bus permanently. Yeah. Um, one concern with real time, he said, uh, is that they do not Z test the zero around. Yeah. So yeah. I see, the, I see this question. Yeah. Oh, Oh, you do good, yeah, good. yeah okay. yes i'm seeing the questions um uh real time is fixing to add some more um and yeah and hope and hopefully gpl will get back online again with my clients a lot of times i'm doing both labs um uh real time is much better at picking up trichothecenes those are all the black mold uh, things they're much better at picking up gliotoxins which are also uh, produced by candida and they're better at aflatoxins uh, ochratoxins are probably the same on both tests the uh, uh um, Great Plains Lab does have xerolerone, which is a hormone, hormonal mimetic. Um, it also has um, mycophenolic acid or MPA, uh, which is very immunosuppressive. Uh, mm. But they, they, there's two, there are two totally different techniques of how they are looking for moles. Um, so uh, real time is on blood now, right? They are doing blood. blood. Uh, no, oh, it's urine. It's urine. It's urine. Okay, because yeah, I feel like for a while they were doing blood, and like they you can't. You can do blood, but but they're they're, they're urine. They're, they're urine. Uh, real time lab also works with a lot of universities and medical centers, so um, you can actually send tissue tissue samples for mycotoxin testing. For example, if you've had breast implants, uh, that's one of the things that, that that's one of the that's one of the places that that molds can grow. So if somebody asks, is it possible to have very high levels of ochratoxin and gliotoxin? Without I like this question. I yeah. see, wonder this too. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you, let's, could you yeah. read it completely? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Okay. So the, 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 the question is, is it possible to have very high levels of ochratoxin and gliotoxin or 10 times higher without exposure to water damage building exposure? So from food or air, et cetera. So um, uh, that question probably has a couple different answers. First of all, ochratoxin and gliotoxins are two different types of mycotoxins. Um, ochratoxins are very commonly also found in grains. So yes, theoretically that could be, you, we could be picking up some, some grains, um, uh, molds in, that are in grains. Gliotoxins, a lot from aspergillus, um, uh, which can also be found in foods, grains in particular, uh, but mostly really from uh, water damaged buildings. Now, your mold exposure may have been a long time ago. And a lot of times people don't get sick from their first exposure. Remember, these are fat soluble toxins. So you can like, I grew up in the, on the East coast and we had basements. So we had, you know, a basement that always smelled a little mildewy, a little moldy. And so that was my first exposures. Those are fat soluble. They get into your cell membranes and they stay there. Um, and then, you know, over time, then we moved and we moved to a couple of different places. You know, there were probably some other exposures. I went off to college. I was living in a very old dorm. Then I moved into, you know, college housing in an apartment that was really nasty. I think that's, I was going to say, I think that's common in college time because you're just totally. sort of like, I'll save money and like eat yeah. ramen and live in this nasty apartment. Well, that might not be the best idea. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a, I've had a lot of college kids. Again, they've gone, you know, yeah, from universities um, who've gone off to, you know, spend their first semester in a dorm and they're coming back with upper respiratory issues and sinus infections or they're coughing all the time or they've just, you know, gotten a cold and it just won't go away. And, you know, it turns out, it, you know, half the dorm is doing the same and it's a problem there. And then they're drinking a lot too. And, um, you know, and then you get sick and what are you giving, you know, what's everybody getting sick when they get an infection? What's this? Oh, well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you're getting, <laughs> you're being treated with antibiotics and then the antibiotics are killing off your good guy bacteria. You're much more likely to get yeast or fungal overgrowth, yeah. uh, you know, candida. From that and that suppresses your immune system even more making you more susceptible to getting sick again and and then you're in that chronic issue so hey if you have any chronic sinus issues do sinus rinsing every single day use a saline rinse and then we add other things to it biocidin and there's another company that uh, is one of the uh, uh, summit uh, sponsors uh, michael balance health products and uh, dr dennis is actually behind that um, they have products also to use uh, you know a lot of sinus rinsing 
why we don't do that for COVID? I mean, that's so like, duh. I love, this new doctor, I love this new Dr. Margaret. You're like so sassy yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just going to just speak my mind. I love it. So just to go back to that question, because I, I might have missed it when I was typing. Yeah, sure. So you're saying it could be an old exposure. Old exposure. Could it also be food if like a current? Uh, yeah, it, yeah it, could, it, could, it could be foods. I mean, it, it, it depends. If you have a really severe leaky gut, then yeah, and foods. But the, um, Usually airborne exposures, you're getting 10 times more mycotoxins than you would in your food supply. Wow, okay. Um, grains are the biggest source in the food supply. Um, again, if you have a normal healthy gut, our gut bacteria should be taking care of getting rid of those molds and mycotoxins. But if it's when you've had a disrupted gut because you've had leaky gut for eight years of antibiotics or standard American diet, genetic mold modified exposure. foods, pesticides, <laughs> pesticides, yeah. A lot of medications, alcohol, too much sugar, uh, all those the mycotoxins themselves, yes, yeah, start to irritate the lining of the intestines. So, but that makes you much more susceptible should you get in a situation where you're being exposed other, you know, through the air or, or foods. Uh, but normally foods and theoretically the food supply is tested for that. But somebody asked about like if it's growing on broccoli or cauliflower, yeah, just cut it off. I mean, that's, I'm, you know, if it's like, if the whole thing's completely moldy, then throw the thing out. If you got a little bit on the outside, I'm not so worried about that. Uh, the, the kind that goes in gr that grows on grains is much more significant because all those grains are being sprayed with pesticides, and mm. um, and they're genetically modified, and so they're already triggering your autoimmunity. Okay, we we had a question uh, from Barbara about like different binders. Like she's tried some. There's a lot of different binders out there. Are there any you particularly like, or you want to kind of compare different binders? That was on the Q and A too here in the bottom. Okay. Okay. I missed, I missed that one. Um, um, so, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different binders and I'm sure, I don't know if you had Neil Nathan talking about that. We talk about that on the summit. Um, charcoal, clay, chlorella, again, the quality of what you get and where you're getting from is important. Um, because, some of the charcoals out there um, and clays can have some heavy metal contamination or they're not coming from great sources. Uh, there's prescription binders like cholestyramine. Um, I don't use cholestyramine anymore though because it has, can have a lot of GI side effects. If I'm gonna use something like that, I'll use Wellcol, which is a, a sort of a form of cholestyramine, but not so much. Um, okay. And then there's Saccharomyces boulardii, there is fiber, there's food binders. So you gotta clean up the diet, like we said, kind of a plant-based paleo, um, um, lots and lots of good fats and good oils. So that's where mm -hmm. I use the lipid membrane therapy um, and a lot of uh, what we would call, like I said, it used to be called the PK protocol. But there's a good company that I use that I get my stuff from. It's, it's called Membrane Health and it's, it's brain is spelled B-R-A-I-N. So it's um, M-E-M capital B-R-A-I-N, Membrane Health. Um, okay. Body Bio is another company. Um, again, that was, um, but... Yeah, I like that company. Yeah, that, those. Okay, are, cool. Yeah, so, so Patricia Patricia Kane uh, just relaunched Membrane Health, very targeted for all of this. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I want to. I'm actually make a note. Um, yeah. Because I, I really into phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine, yeah. and it's just like you have to. You have, again, you have to get super high quality because there's a lot of crappy stuff out there. A lot of it is just yeah. soy lecithin, which is not what you want. And, um, but phosphatidylcholine is critically important because most of our cell membranes, 80% of our cell membranes are made from phosphatidylcholine. And so I use that um, to help detoxify as well as repair damaged cells, and particularly if you've got neurological issues. Yeah, it's my number one product for brain fog. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's worked the best for me. So we sell a really nice one mm -hmm. from Quicksilver. Um, let me just go back and see if there's any other questions or we'll kind of wrap up. I'm sure there's a gazillion questions, but um, <laughs> let me see. Da, da, da. I think we've kind of answered a lot of these. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. So um, going back to the GPL, do you think it's just because they changed their parameters of like what's in range versus out of range? Like, or they, is it yeah, something they beyond that? Well, they changed their parameters, but they're, they're um, and, um, more, more to be revealed. Oh, okay. We don't have to say it. <laughs> say it all right now. I'm actually interviewing him next week, I think, or two. Oh, weeks Matt, Matt? No, I interviewed Matt recently, but I'm okay. interviewing, interviewing William Shaw in a couple okay. weeks. So, so, yeah. Yeah. And you know, they, I, they, I, have, they have, and they, I use their organic acid testing, their oat testing, their GPL tox test um, is, is good too. So, 
Um, yeah, and I, I think that things go up and down with labs. Like, I'm, you, you and I have seen this over the years. Uh, a trusted lab, and you're, like, not happy with certain markers anymore. Like, they had a problem with their machine. It does happen. So I don't totally know all the backstory in GPL, but just, just, to get, just to give, like, they have done a lot for this field. Yeah, and they so have. I they they have to too hard and, on and, them. You know, and, they, and they, you know, I think that their, that their test, their, their uh, GPL mycotox test, really, again, did help bring some stuff forward. Um, it says, yeah. Yeah. It's just, again, the, the two different tests have, they, they each have their areas of excellence and their differences. And I like using both when I can, because, again, I'm seeing a lot of really sick people. Uh, so, um, zero alone, like somebody was mentioning, that, that's so common um, with hormonal disruption, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to wrap up here at our clients soon. Sure. So um, thank you so much. I'm excited about some of the new, like, content on this event. So, I, you know, we like, our audience likes to be nerdy, and yeah. I like to be nerdy. So I'm always happy, and they are too, when there's an event where you're like, oh, I'm really going to learn. You know, we don't want to learn the basics, right? No. Right. No, we there's a lot of advanced stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it sounds really exciting. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Barbara. So if you haven't signed up, it's just on the chat or if it's on Facebook, I have the link there. And if you join late, it's no big deal because there'll be some encore or you can buy the package. It's actually quite affordable for a lot of information. Yeah, it's, yeah. And, and, and like somebody was mentioning that it's also available in transcript forms. So if you have a hard time, you know, with watching okay. stuff because, because the EMFs, you can, you can, you can get it in the transcript. That's a great point. Well, so nice to reconnect with you. Yeah, Monday absolutely. And, Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, you're doing great out work out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I'll have to yeah. tell you more about what we're up to. Or yeah, absolutely. Things, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.